There are so many different types of IT folks. There's IT people of all stripes, level one, level two, level three. There's different IT managers. There's an infrastructure manager, an operations manager, service delivery manager. What do all of these managers do? Why do I need all of these managers? An infrastructure manager is what we're gonna be talking about. We'll give you a bit of a snapshot around essentially what they do, what their roles are. So before we talk about that, the tech fail for today, Windows, Eight. What was so bad about Windows 8? Did you hear of Windows 8.1? Why was there an 8.1? Maybe it's because 8 didn't do so well. Of course, this was a jump up from Windows 7 and it was designed to be a little bit more touch friendly, but it did get a significant backlash from people and users. They removed the start menu and then went for this charms bar instead, which looked a little bit odd. And you had to sort of do swiping from the right of the screen, a little bit confusing, made it challenging from a compatibility perspective. Some older software did not work very, very well. And the enterprise world just did not get Windows 8 very, very well. And what's crazy is that about a year later, Microsoft said, we're gonna release, super exciting, we're gonna release 8.1. There's a whole bunch of different IT manager roles. And it really depends on the size of the company, whether a company is gonna have an IT infrastructure manager, an IT operations manager, an IT security manager, service desk manager, et cetera, et cetera. So there's gonna be different specialist roles for different specialities within a environment, right? And the reality is that a IT network can be quite complex. To be able to manage a IT department can be quite complex because there's a lot of different moving parts. There's obviously level one, level two, and level three type of IT people. Level one people being the folks that are gonna be dealing generally with the help desk, they're gonna be dealing with user tickets, with phone calls coming in. You know, if they're using Microsoft Teams, messages coming in and they're managing all of this via a ticketing system. Stuff such as resetting passwords, uh, you know, doing some basic troubleshooting, installing software, things of that nature. Then moving into more of a level two position where you've got somebody who is a little bit more senior to that. They're more like a desktop, a technical sort of person. You then move into level three. And of course, level three, other people who are your system admins, engineers, network people, people who now have that administrator engineer badge. And they're the ones responsible for managing all of the day-to-day -day network. They're gonna be looking after all the network. They're gonna be looking after the firewalls, the switches, the routers, the links coming into buildings, the VPN links between offices. They're gonna be looking after the servers. They're gonna be looking after virtual servers, physical servers, servers potentially in the cloud, looking after storage units such as SANs, NASs. Gonna be looking after the comms cabinets, all of the cabling of everything, the labeling of everything, racking equipment, how all the equipment is kept cool with air conditioning, all of that in a data center and comms rooms, in server rooms, in a business. And then all of that, of course, is running specific software to be able to manage all of that, different versions of virtualization technology. Your firewalls have got their own different vendor, different software that's running on them. They all have to be supported, managed, secured, all of that. They're essentially the roles required to sort of manage all of that. An infrastructure manager manages generally everything that is level three. Everything that sort of is back end, the stuff that staff do not generally see. I mean, from a staff perspective, when they think of IT, what do they think of? They think of the person who's gonna come and fix their computer or give them a new computer when they need a new computer. They don't realize that behind the scenes, there's all of this other stuff going on. There's all of this equipment in comms cabinets, that there's this technology called Active Directory, that there are domains, that there's DNS, that there's DHCP, that there's security software, that the storage is sitting on file servers, on storage units. There's all these security things in place around firewalls, allowing certain traffic in, certain traffic out, dealing with your external vendors, dealing with the procurement of all servers and networking equipment. But ultimately, they're all the foundational pieces of tech that are required to make everything else happen. Because without any of this tech, then a user is just given a computer. They are now not necessarily dealing with the day-to-day -day tickets of staff. Now that's not to say that they couldn't. Sometimes an infrastructure manager may actually also be responsible for dealing with day-to-day -day operations. They could work with the service desk and the help desk people. They could work with setting up computers across the floor. But commonly, an infrastructure manager is gonna be now responsible for all of the back-end infrastructure stuff, the tech, 
all of the systems, the networking, potentially the security. So of course, administration is one of the key things responsible for the day-to-day -day admin of all of these systems. Responsibilities around designing and architecting all of this tech, installing it, ensuring that all of these systems are maintained and that they're functioning as optimally as they can. Let me tell you about Atera, a awesome platform for monitoring, for ticketing, making sure that your environment is healthy. You can actually see all of your locations and a snapshot of exactly what is going on across a range of operating systems. We've even got a ticketing system where you can actually go and log tickets, creating a ticket, adding your relevant comments. And if you wanna automate and get smarter, you can also use the AI button, which essentially uses ChatGPT in the background. One of the best things is you can see exactly the health and the performance of your individual devices, the specs of those devices, and then triggers for those devices to make sure that you don't miss out on anything. You need to make sure that your environment is healthy, that your CPU is looking good, that your hard drive space is looking good. The great thing is that right out of the platform, you can also remote control into the device itself. So it makes it super easy to have everything centrally managed from this one portal. You can track your assets, you can do your inventory checks, you can also do scans of your environment so they can automatically pick up the information without you having to do that stuff manually. So in the video description, I've got a link to go and check out Atera. So go and click that, sign up, awesome platform to make sure that your environment is always running healthy. All of these systems, of course, have to be backed up. So they're gonna have backup systems that they need to manage, different sorts of software, different sorts of tech that are responsible. You know, how often do you wanna back up things? Where do the backups go? How long are they retained for? Now, sometimes in a company, you may have the opportunity to have dedicated security people, like a security analyst or a security manager. Now, it also really depends on the size of the company, but sometimes an infrastructure manager may be responsible for the security as well. All of the cybersecurity, making sure that all of the tech that's under their responsibility is secure. Now, the cloud, maybe under the responsibility of the infrastructure manager, it may not be. And of course, the cloud, we're talking about probably the big boys being AWS, Azure and Google Cloud, and there's others that are out there. And of course, there's a whole bunch of tech that lives in those cloud environments. There's cloud versions of virtual servers, virtual switches, virtual firewalls, virtual networking servers, all of that stuff that also resides in the cloud. And so that isn't necessarily on-premise. It's not sitting within my own data center that an infrastructure manager may have to manage. But an infrastructure manager needs to be across that because nowadays it's more and more common for companies to be working in some sort of a hybrid environment where they've got tech on-premise and they've got tech in the cloud and it mixes together. So they need to be across both of them. They need to work very closely with their cloud engineers, their cloud techs, because it's gonna be directly related. For example, you've got in the cloud, you've got Azure, you've got Azure AD. You've got a domain controller sitting in your data center on a server that is running AD as well. You need them both to talk to each other. You wanna make sure that your network is set up so that the on-prem and the cloud work together. Now, the other thing that an infrastructure manager is gonna do is because it's a management position, they're involved in managerial tasks. They're gonna be involved with dealing with people in a senior capacity, dealing with senior people in an organization, answering potentially to a senior leadership team or to the board, because they're now responsible for a lot more big picture sorts of stuff. And with that, they're gonna to have to potentially write business cases, roadmaps around infrastructure managing budgets, making sure that the budget has all of the infrastructure that they need for the next financial year. All of the OPEX, all of the CAPEX, signing up contracts, managed service agreements, responding to RFPs like requests for proposals, requests for quotes, and ultimately is aligned with what the business goals are. You don't just put in tech for the sake of putting in tech, you wanna make sure that it lines up to what the business wants to do, putting in the right systems, the processes in place to be able to allow the business to be successful, grow and do whatever they do as a company. Are you an IT manager? Are you an infrastructure manager? Are you an admin? Let us know down below in the comments what you're currently doing in tech. But hey, if you really enjoyed this video, I would love it if you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel as well. I release tech videos every single week. I've also got a whole bunch of training videos that you will also find helpful. So why don't you go check those out? I've got those links down below in this video description. Until then, we'll see you next video.